My name is Kevin Flanagan. I'm an architect living in London, England, with and a partner with PLP Architecture. And we're involved in a lot of innovative research uh, with uh, universities typically and also with the industry. And one of the things that we're doing and we're discussing now is timber towers. We were invited by Cambridge University and Smith and Wallwork engineers who have about 15 years of experience with cross laminated timber, engineered mass timber, we usually try to call it. The wonderful thing about a new material is that it has different types of properties and not just structurally but aesthetic. People respond to the material quite differently than they would steel or concrete. Structurally it's really a cellular material so the type of engineering that's required for high-rise buildings is quite different we found uh, compared to steel and concrete. It flexes different, it has a different uh, vibration characteristic and its load-bearing capacity is different. So what we're finding is that to really make the best use of the material, because we're only doing timber towers, we don't have a core, these are not concrete core, steel core, there really are not hybrids, because we really want to study the material and learn the most about how we can uh, sequester CO2. What we're finding is that in terms of design, as an architect, we need to think of the material and the building design on the basis of the material itself. What is it good to, for? What can it do? What challenges or, or structural capabilities does it have? You know, concrete has been around since the Greeks. It's about 2,500 years old. It was perfected by the Romans. And its methodology really goes back 2,000 years. You have to build a formwork. You have to pour the material. You have to wait till it gets strong. Well, why are we waiting? Why not just build the formwork? That is typically timber and then leave it because that has the globe bearing capability. So in cities of the world, there's a new calculation for foundations. After 10 years, the foundations can take double the loading. So if you build ever the concrete, you can build another, let's say 10 story building, another 10 stories, 20 story building. But because the timber is so, so light, you can build another you know, 40 groups of 10-story buildings on top. And when you go to Paris, that's exactly what they're doing. They're building and making their cities denser. The world's population is going to double by about 2030. By 2050, two-thirds of the world's population will be in cities, in large conurbations. And this material is going to be great for that because it sequesters CO2. As the population grows, our profile will increase in terms of CO2. And this material will absorb the CO2 and get us closer to the Paris Accord. So it's really something that is part of this 21st century response to not just AI and methods of construction that use robotics because it's light and strong, but it really will allow us to move forward the whole industry and create cheaper, better, better loved buildings than we have right now. Um, so because we're trying to really study the material and its structural capability and really gain the full benefit of its CO2 sequestering, we really are trying to study it just simply as a basis of, of doing everything out of concrete from the floor up. So our philosophy is different. Um, and we're trying to move the industry forward and the codes as well to accept that type of building. And in places of the world where I speak, this is the thing that's really at hand, that many countries are now starting to look at the material and saying, we have forests, because we don't have a pulp and paper industry anymore. Let's put people to work with a new industry and a new marketplace, which is housing, residential. These typically do quite good in short spans. People feel healthier in this material when they when it's uh, used on the walls and ceilings and floors. So it has these great psychological advantages.